All righty. Awesome. So yeah, um, it is recorded. I'm hoping that the way that I've done settings is that you will only see me, the person talking. If you do feel uncomfortable about being recorded, feel free to turn your videos off. Um, otherwise, I love to see your smiley faces because I can, you know, tell if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Um, if you're falling asleep, then I will add in some more stories. <laughs> Um, interruptions are important. So that's what I mentioned before. Please, please, please ask questions, say hello, um, whatever. Just feel free to interrupt me at any point. I'm happy to go off topic um, or to go off what I've presented and put into the slides. I will try and um, value your time, however. So I will try and keep within the hours uh, time frame. Um, okay, so why are we even talking about histamine intolerance? Well, I would love you guys to get your fingers nice and warm and actually put into the chat box why you're here today, because again, this is going to help me to present the information better for you. Um, so if, I've got a few questions in there. If everyone can use the chat box, um, why are you here today or what do you want to know? or if you know that histamine is an issue for you, um, or if you have you know, joined this webinar because I've been talking about some of the symptoms, how is it affecting your life? So answer one, two, three, or all three of those questions in the chat box would be awesome. So Vanessa has said, does everyone uh, with allergies have histamine intolerance? Great question. Um, yeah, I will talk a bit more about that, but basically uh, histamine is uh, part of every cell in, well, it's made, it lives in almost every cell in your body, especially where um, your, your antibodies are. So it often goes hand in hand, which is why a lot of people who use antihistamines will feel better if they're getting allergy symptoms. Uh, Jules would like to know how it fits in. Do you mean for you specifically in your symptoms? I want to add something in the chat box. Um, Nicola, I've been suffering with chronic urticaria. Yep. Oh, major sign potentially of histamine issues. Um, Chelsea, because I'm currently aware of the histamine being an issue for me and I'm following a low histamine diet. Yeah, Chelsea. I, I know Chelsea. She's doing awesome. <laughs> Uh, Tara, a naturopath told me I have uh, histamine intolerance. I'm interested to hear more. So many foods seem to trigger me. Yep, yeah, I'm definitely going to be going over the low histamine diet because that's actually how I test for histamine intolerance. I think it's like the best way. Um, also really bad chronic cough and reflux. I have seen that with many clients also being a link with histamine. Um, I suspect I have some symptoms. I would like to confirm my hypothesis. Awesome. Hopefully you get value out of this. Um, okay, there's lots of comments going through. Um, keep putting them in, keep putting them in. And I, I, I believe that I will potentially answer all of them. I'm just going to skim through. And if I don't, throughout the webinar, you can ask like more questions if I haven't addressed what your issue is how someone said heart palpitations they're experiencing those um anxiety itching yep yep exercise i'll talk about exercise and histamine because that is very interesting link there um red wine reacting to red wine yes that can be a trigger um any exams that can detect intolerance i'm guessing amanda you're talking about maybe tests and i will talk about that a little bit later um awesome okay yay eczema is a symptom yes it can be okay awesome all right thank you everybody that was great all right, well, here are some symptoms. So in the chat box, if everyone else has been following along, you would have seen that there, um, a lot of people have been thinking, have been saying, I've been experiencing this, I've been experiencing that. So these are some of the main symptoms. And this is also why I wanted to run this webinar because as you read through all these, headaches, migraines, asthma, itchy skin, puffy eyes, swelling, facial flushing, high hives, hay fever, nasal congestion, runny nose, cough, insomnia, fatigue, irritability, confusion, palpitations, racing heart. Well, I probably needed more dot points there. Anxiety, panic attacks, abdominal pain, gas bloating, premenstrual cramps. Sorry about the um, typos there. 
there is a lot of symptoms that can be related to histamine. So it gets really confusing when you're like, well, I'm getting like maybe two, three, maybe all of those. Is it even a histamine issue? And that's why I really wanted to put this webinar in on because it's, it's a really confusing thing to try and work out. But if you discover that you have histamine intolerance and you know how to address it, it can literally change your life. Um, like, and I'm not being dramatic about that because for some people, they are, you know, it's not just the health issues that they're experiencing, but it's how it's then impacting their life. Um, so in our clinic, we're really um, passionate, very good at addressing energy, mood and gut issues. And, you know, histamine can be part of that for sure. And so, so you've got all these symptoms, but the deep pain and, you know, if, so a lot of people will come to me because they're experiencing these symptoms, but ask enough questions. And really, it's actually not about health. Like it's kind of, yes, health is important, but it's what health can do for you. So if you're struggling with these symptoms and these health issues, if you have histamine intolerance, or even if you don't, but you're getting all these issues, you don't have to write it in the chat box, but just have a little think in your head. Um, are these things or these work issues holding you back. So I find that a lot of people start struggling to work or, you know, if you're running a business, um, if you have you know, dreams around career and goals, these histamine issues literally can hold you back. I've had clients who can no longer work anymore because their body gets to a state of burnout that they just can't carry on. And that's going to have a huge impact on your self-esteem, your finances so much. Um, family, so I'm a mama. I um, I actually didn't, no, I did have some histamine issues. It wasn't my big thing. It was part of the whole picture. But when my health really broke down after I had children and I had health issues before that, they just weren't affecting my ability to function. But after I had my two babies, um, uh, so many things, anxiety, heartburn, um, chemical sensitivity, fatigue, low immunity, a lot of things that sound like histamine intolerance, actually. And although I felt crappy, the big thing for me was that I just felt like a terrible mum. I felt like this lady every day, just wanted to go and crawl up in the corner and start crying because I felt like I was failing and that I was also psychologically damaging my children because I just couldn't cope with life. And so that was a big thing for me. So if you feel like you're, you know, in that space it's crappy but there is a way out of it and sometimes feeling that pain is enough to actually take the plunge to make the changes that you need to make to heal your body um, relationship issues that was me also I was the dragon mom but also the dragon wife everything my husband said to me it was very personal and so there was a lot of contention in our relationship to the point of we almost got a divorce and so again that was a tipping point for me that holy crap if I don't fix my body where am I going to be like I'm literally going to lose not just the things that I love but the people that I love the most um, and life you know can you do the things that you want to do um, that you love to do when you feel when you're in that state of burnout and like for me personally too, I just felt I lost joy. I was a very creative person. I now have that creativity back, but I just lost all creativity. I didn't feel like laughing or smiling. Like it was really, really dismal and life is not supposed to be like that. So these big deep pains are why I do what I do. Not just so I can help you to heal your body systems, but so that you can live the life that you want to. Um, and so our ending body burnout solution. So what I mentioned before, it's all about getting to the root causes. It's not enough just to do a diet or take some supplements, which is, you know, what clinical nutrition is all about, but it's really tapping into those deeper root cause issues that are, you know, often at an emotional, mental, behavioral, environmental level. Um, and then the payoffs when you can do that is you're going to have more health, more vibrancy, more productivity, and feel deeply connected, not just to the people that you love, but to yourself. And that's what we love working with people too, because if you again, if you ask the question deep enough or ask the deep questions, a lot of people who are very burnt out, sick, their bodies inflamed, just don't love themselves. And that's absolutely a whole nervous system and the way that they think, feel, and then behave. 
Okay, so let's get into histamine. Um, welcome, welcome to the people who have jumped in. You haven't missed much, just me babbling on about like how passionate I am. <laughs> so if you don't care about me and you just want to know about histamine, you haven't missed much. Um, okay, so sorry, I'm trying to not have heaps of words on slides, but I kind of needed to put all this in. I probably could have made it into three slides, but basically histamine is found in all of your, almost all of your tissues in your body. And that becomes really significant when we think about all the different symptoms that histamine intolerance cause, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, it's in, so someone mentioned before about like is allergies and histamine connected? And so, yes, they are because histamine is produced and stored in your mast cells and also your white blood cells. And so these are areas that are um, part of your immune system. So histamine is kind of like your first line of defense. It's there if you're triggered by some sort of um, allergen, whether that's pollens or food. There are lots of other ways though that you can produce histamine. Um, and most of the histamine or the higher amounts of histamine that is stored in the body is around your nose, mouth, feet, gut lining and blood vessels. So if you think about that, then you can probably see, you know, it's like, okay, so like itchy nose, runny nose, oh, that makes sense if you're nose is like producing heaps of histamine gut lining as well so a lot of people who have a histamine intolerance to start developing gut issues whether that's reflux or bloating or alternating bowel movements that's very common um, now histamine isn't bad histamine is amazing and it keeps your body functioning so it literally like supports your heart rate and your gastric acid production supports your appetite, um, it helps to produce your hormones. So histamine is not bad. It's really important to the body. It just becomes an issue when your bucket load of histamine gets too high. And I want to talk about like reasons why that happens because they are some of the root causes. Um, okay, so, oh, sorry, I'm just reading the chat box just to make sure I haven't missed anything. Marion asks, yes, slides will be available after the webinar. Yeah, give us a couple of days. <laughs> um, Amanda also said, what came first, gut issues that led to histamine intolerance or the other way around? I will talk about that in a secchi. Okay, so roles of histamine. Um, so I won't go over like specifically all of these, but in terms of where histamine is in the body and how it supports different functions in the body, it's very important for skin, for your respiratory system, for your heart and for your womb for women. Really important for the immune system, your GIT, so that's your gastrointestinal tract. Even important for your neurotransmitters, so that's your brain, which then makes sense as to why some people start developing anxiety when they have histamine intolerance and very important for your immune system. Um, and oh, this is, I don't know if I can blow this up so that you guys can see this a bit easier. Um, I won't go into like the little itty bitty details, but this is how like history literally affects every part of your body, which is why when I brought up those symptoms of whatever it was, 20 main symptoms of histamine intolerance, it wasn't all just gut and it wasn't all just like allergy responses that you would expect to see if you have an allergy trigger. It's like everything. <laughs> so if we have a look around this circle, whoops, oh dear. Um, so, okay, so it can affect your central nervous system, which then can lead to things like headaches and nausea and vomiting your circadian rhythm. Um, so that's even like affecting your sleep. It can cause you to feel vertigo. And then if you look down here, it's cardiovascular system. So that can cause hypertension. Um, anaphylaxis, arrhythmia, so someone mentioned heart palpitations, um, which is really interesting because a lot of people are like, oh, heart, palp heart palpitation, do I have a heart disease? Or is that an anxiety attack? You know what? Maybe it's just a histamine response and your body's kind of psyching out a bit. <laughs> Um, skin, so someone I think mentioned eczema, skin issues. So definitely you can start developing um, like full blown eczema or dermatitis, or you might just notice a flushing of your skin. If anyone's drunk wine before, you can pop in the box. Um, have you ever had like that flushing experience? That could be a histamine response to um, wine. Uh, and uh, wow, my mom has had a lot of these as well. Yes. Yes. Oh, Anna, maybe it's like something in the family. 
Um, respiratory tract. So again, this is like nose, sinuses. A lot of people um, will develop like sinusitis, especially if it's chronic all the time and it's not just kind of like hay fever season or if you're sneezing a lot, um, they're quite common. Uterus. So this is really interesting. And one of the root causes actually is that if your body produces too much estrogen, it can cause histamine intolerance. And so histamine is produced in the uterus as well, which then can cause this to like estrogen excess, but it can also literally affect your um, your period, whether it's heavy, painful, PMS, it's all connected. Gut stuff, um, so stomach ache, cramps, diarrhea are all quite common. Um, heartburn's not there, but it is just like a major inflammatory response with histamine. That was a big one for me, actually. Um, and again, I didn't have major histamine issues, but if I when I was feeling very inflamed, went on a low histamine diet and it's like, oh, wow, two weeks of absolutely no heartburn when it was like a daily occurrence. Um, all right, so that's that slide. Feel free to ask any questions if you have any questions about that, but pretty interesting stuff. Um, okay, oh, as someone mentioned about exercise. So I put this in because... It's not necessarily that exercise is part of your body systems, but there's research to show that histamine is produced when you're exercising. And I had a few clients a while ago, a couple of years ago, who were like, yeah, you know, we worked out that they had histamine issues. And then they're like, I get really itchy when I exercise. And there was another lady who said, yeah, every time I exercise, my body throbs with pain. And then I came across this article. This is actually with a, um, I came across this when, during an ATMS webinar. And I'm like, well, that makes sense. While those people were, that one lady said, I'm allergic to exercise. And it can feel like that if your body's already, um, already has too much histamine in your system add in exercise and you're producing more. Um, yeah, Marion asked, how do you know when those symptoms are due to histamine or other health issues? That is um, where we need to connect the dots. So everyone is different. Not everyone has histamine intolerances. And that's where you could take something like um, anxiety, for example. It could be a histamine issue. It could be adrenals. It could be Indeed, it could be a detox issue. There's so many different things. So in functional medicine, um, like premises, test, not guess. So actually use diagnostic tools to work out exactly what is causing your symptoms. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, okay, so some root causes. I think I, in, I mean, there are many, but there are kind of like seven. I think I came up with seven main ones that lead to histamine issues. Um, this is just a, I really want to create our own graphic, but this was just something I found online where it's like, you have all these symptoms, all these conditions, but then underneath these are, you know, some of the root causes, not all of them. Sometimes it's environmental due to toxins. Sometimes it's genetics, but if it's genetics, your genetics don't have to express, or they'll only express if given the right opportunity, negative opportunity it could be diet, it could be toxic relationships, it could be because you're not moving enough, it like literally could be because of poor self image and what you think and feel about yourself. And some of these stories we create about ourselves happened right back from when we were a child, regardless of whether you've had like traumatic experiences or not. I'm a big believer that these things carry on and affect our nervous system, which then causes body systems to break down. Um, so when we work on histamine issues and any form of body burnout, um, it's always tapping into these three things. So supporting the body, supporting the mind and supporting the environment. And these three, body, mind and environment, are often the three big pillars where root causes stem from. They're also the areas that need to be addressed in order for you to truly heal and to not just, again, have symptomatic improvement short term, but to have that like lasting health for life. Um, 
Okay, so uh, in functional medicine, we use this, uh, this is our three body systems. Uh, it was actually adapted from my mentor, Dr. Daniel Kalish. Uh, so he's a functional medicine expert in America. Actually, I'm running a webinar with him on Friday. So I'll pop the link in there at the end of the um, this webinar in case you want to attend that one as well. Um, but these are the three main areas that break down, burnout, become imbalanced, which then leads to symptoms, conditions, and health issues. And there are some really specific things in here that are related to histamine issues. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about adrenals and stress. Also, your sex hormones can lead to histamine issues. Definitely gut stuff can lead to histamine issues. And if you have some detoxification issues or nutrient deficiencies, that can also lead to some of these histamine intolerance symptoms that I mentioned earlier. Um, okay, so stress is a big one. Whoops. Uh, so stress, I mean, and stress can come in all forms. It could be mental, it could be emotional, it could be psychological, it could be trauma. It could also be physical stress. So whether that's like overtraining with exercise or being too hot or too cold or being exposed to too many toxins, all of these stresses will put um, a burden on your adrenal glands. So they sit on top of your kidneys and they are the main organs that are responsible for balancing and supporting your stress hormones. Um, now it's been shown that when you're stressed and it doesn't matter what type of stress that is, when you're stressed, your body can release histamines or does release histamine. So if you're chronically stressed or chronically in stress or going through fluctuations of stress, your body could, um, like your bucket load of histamine could get too high due to that stress. Um, oh, uh, just, I guess uh, a couple of people asked about like testing and how do you know? Well, actually around histamine, um, so there are different tests that you can test to see if you actually have um, histamine build up in your system. There's a blood test. I don't love it though. I used to run it. It was very expensive, like $500. And it just wasn't reliable um, in terms of how people responded when they took low, uh, high histamine foods out of their diet. So when I test for histamine intolerance, it's not very scientific, that side of things. I literally use a low histamine diet as a test because people have dramatic results or at least some improvement if there's histamine issues when you're using a... Um, a low histamine diet, which I'll chat about later on. In terms of like what, what are then the root causes, that's where the testing comes into it. So I'll be testing your adrenal glands. Is that an issue for this person? Their cortisol is no longer being produced. I mean, it's producing a bit because you're alive, but that is, that is an example of um, adrenal fatigue where your cortisol levels are just flatlining. They should be nice and high, hugging this top end of the green range if your adrenal glands were functioning really well. So that's a sign that someone is under chronic amounts of stress and it could be then affecting cortisol. Well, it is affecting cortisol, could be affecting histamine issues. Um, so estrogen excess, as I mentioned earlier, uh, estradiol increases production of histamine. Now, again, if your body's nice and balanced and your hormones are fluctuating as they should, it wouldn't be an issue. So, oh, yay, I just read a comment. Chelsea said, I felt 99% better after just 24 hours of being on the low histamine diet. I couldn't believe it. I know, that's what I mean by it's life changing. <laughs> Two weeks on and my energy is off the charts. My mind is clearer. Awesome as. <laughs> um that's so cool. Okay, so now for Chelsea, Chelsea's goal is now to address the root causes because you don't want to stay on a restricted diet for the rest of your life. But that is a perfect test to show that for Chelsea, there's histamine issues. Um, okay, so back to estrogen. So yeah, if you're, you're balancing your hormones, when you produce estrogen and that uh, spikes at day 14, if you're on a 28 day cycle and you're, you release an egg, um, your body will just clear any excess estrogen and also histamine. So it will become an issue if your body's not producing your hormones appropriately. Um, and sometimes, again, that can come back to stress because stress will actually suppress your progesterone, which then can lead to an estrogen buildup or an imbalance of those hormones. 
Detox issues are probably the number one cause for estrogen dominance, however. Uh, and I'll talk a bit more about detox pathways in a secchi. Um, Ruby asked, how do we combat unavoidable stresses? Yeah, so you know, that is a really big question that probably needs like a whole day workshop. <laughs> And it's levels as well. So when I talk about root cause levels, like top level is, well, let's reset, recharge your body systems because that's going to give you more capacity. Um, so, you know, it could be, okay, let's, you know, if you have adrenal issues, then let's support your adrenal glands with, you know, diet and your specific supplements. But then as you continue going down, so that's good. Like if you're a carer, for example, maybe you have an autistic child or you're caring for a dying parent or something like that that's pretty full on. And so, you know, having that support is going to help you. Um, but then it's also how you respond to stresses. So reducing any stresses that you can and then working out what you can control. So a lot of people have unnecessary stress and anxiety because they choose to um, concern themselves about stresses that are outside of their control. And so, you know, just coming back, doing some reflection, thinking about what are some stresses that I can control? Um, so if we're talking about estrogen, for example, it's like, well, can you ditch all your toxic skincare products? That's going to help reduce toxins. It's going to help your liver. That's a stressor. Um, if you're in a relationship that you can get out of or, you know, work towards getting out of or work towards fixing it, you know, is that within your control? Um, at the end of the day, we can only really control the way that we think and feel. And so that's a big part of like our ending body burnout method is regardless of what's going on in your life, the crap that goes on, <laughs> you can find your own inner peace, which then is going to help support your body systems to function properly. Um, Vanessa asks, what about menopause? Does that make histamine intolerance more likely? It depends. It depends what your hormones are doing. So if you go into menopause again with like nice balanced hormones what will happen is your uh, your sex hormones actually deplete and drop down and then you stop bleeding uh, that shouldn't be an issue if you're going into menopause though with that imbalance where there's not enough progesterone too much estrogen then yes it can definitely um, cause a bit of a bombshell when you enter menopause because things get a bit more stressful inside your body when your hormones are trying to adjust for menopause. Um, uh, Nicola, everything you're saying so far is me. <laughs> Can't wait to start the diet. Awesome. Okay, so this is just an example. There's different ways that you can test your female hormones, but this is something that I, I love doing a 28-day female hormone cycle. So if you go to your GP and again, like um, fine if you do this, but most GPs will just test like do a one blood sample. And although that gives you a good snapshot, sometimes it can miss a whole heap of other crappy stuff that's going on in your cycle. And this is a good example, like, hey, maybe if you tested on day 14, uh, oh, this person's not producing any progesterone, so that's not good. Yeah, actually this probably a snapshot will show up, not great stuff. But as you can see here, uh, progesterone very low. So it should be coming up and hugging this top end of the green range. And that would mean that you have a beautiful lead up to your period. No PMS, life is lovely. Um, but oh, if you're not, it is not fun. And then if on top of that, if you also have high amounts of estrogen that are going up and down all cycle, you feel like a crazy woman. <laughs> Like, honestly, um, I've had, uh, uh, this is years ago, but I had one lady who was literally like suicidal. She said, beautiful, like I feel fine, normal human being for the first part of my cycle, but come the second half, she would get suicidal anxiety. And then this is not her test result, but it kind of looked very similar. It was like up and down and really high estrogen. Um, I mean, so that can cause all sorts of symptoms, but in terms of the scope of today, talking about histamine intolerance, this is just a sign that it's like, okay, so we've got to do some hormone work to address your histamine intolerance if this is a thing for you. Um, oh, that's a good question. Who? Um, not sure if I pronounced your name right. How about fasting? Does it help with controlling the histamine production? Um, look, it might, 
because of what I'm about to talk about with dysbiosis. So I find people with a lot of gut issues will actually feel better with fasting because you're just taking off. Um, well, also too, if you're fasting, you're not eating as much food. So which will probably help when it comes to uh, using a low histamine diet. So yeah, maybe it's not something that I've done clinically or that I've really looked into, but I could see that there could be a benefit in doing that. Um, so dysbiosis, now someone asked about like, is it gut stuff that then causes histamine intolerance or is it the other way around? Histamine intolerance only exists when there's issues in the body. So it might be gut, but it also might be stress or it might be estrogen, but gut is a pretty big one. And I would say pretty much all the people that we've worked with with histamine intolerances have had some sort of dysbiosis, some sort of gut issue that needed to be addressed. Um, so there are some specific bacteria and yeast. You probably might have heard about candida is one of them. Um, but there's a bunch of different microbes that are part of your normal flora. But if they start overgrowing, they produce histamine. And so if you think about, like I always use the analogy of your bucket of your histamine load. Um, okay, so you've got stress. You're also producing too much estrogen. Now you've got this bacteria or this candida or yeast infection that's spitting out histamine. Then add in like all the histamine foods and it's no wonder that people are feeling really crappy when they have histamine intolerance just because that load gets too high. Um, so in terms of like treating histamine intolerance, yes, often we need to do some gut support and often it's about reducing the bad bacteria, building up your good bacteria. Um, this is just an example of what a, a snapshot, this stool test has many pages, but this is um, like specifically around opportunistic bacteria and candida. So again, if I have someone like, for example, Chelsea, who's done the low histamine diet, she's like feeling great. Um, you know, if and as we get lab test results back, it's like, okay, well, what's causing that? If she gets a result like this, I'll be like, definitely getting in and doing some gut work, girlfriend, because <laughs> that is a major issue right there. Um, okay, enzyme deficiencies. So uh, en enzyme deficiencies can also cause histamine intolerance. Um, and so you've got, so your pancreas produces enzymes, but you've also got within your gut lining, um, they're called brush border enzymes. And I think this is a picture of it. I actually just found it on Canva. I'm like, that looks right. <laughs> so basically when your gut lining becomes damaged and you might've heard of something like leaky gut, very often those brush border enzymes become damaged as well. And then that literally affects your ability to break down the histamines in foods high in histamine. So I, I always say I believe that a healthy body, especially a healthy gut, can eat all healthy foods. So I love the low histamine diet as treatment, but not as a forever thing, because you should be able to heal up this gut. You should be able to have all the parts in your body that can help break down histamine properly. Um, so again, Figuring that out, um, you can actually look at digestive enzymes and see, is that an issue? Does that need to be supported? And what I love about functional medicine lab testing as well is it just saves so much time. So rather than trying to like play guesswork and it's like, oh, it might be this, it might be that. Let's do a little protocol on that and see how you go. We get the information really quickly and we can figure out like those root causes. Um, from the body system level. And then it's like, okay, well, why is that happening? And why is that happening? <laughs> uh, nutrient deficiencies. So these are really common. So in order to break down histamine, you need vitamin C is really important. B12, P5P, also known as vitamin B6, um, semi, and also copper. So all of these nutrients are really important. Now you might have a deficiency in these nutrients for a number of reasons. Um, one, one might literally be diet related. Maybe you're just not eating a very nutrient rich diet and you're, you don't have the nutrients needed over time. Um, another reason could be because of gut issues, which kind of like could be a cause of histamine intolerance anyway, but let's add in more gut issues you're not breaking down foods properly anymore. And so you're not actually utilizing these nutrients that you need to support histamine intolerance in the first place. Um, and so then it can become this really vicious cycle. And another big reason, um, you know, if this is a big thing in terms of why you have histamine issues is it can be genetic issues too. So some people um, will burn through say B6 or B2 or SAMI.
granny or copper because of genetic mutations in your body, which means that you're more susceptible to, to developing histamine intolerance. Now, I said it earlier, um, but again, if you have these genetic SNPs, it doesn't mean it's all doom and gloom and you're going to be sick for the rest of your life. It's like they can be not fixed because you can't fix a genetic mutation, but you can definitely support it. And also if you have these genetic issues, but it hasn't started to express, then you can prevent that from happening. Um, and this is a little just outline in terms of looking at all these pathways and, you know, potential genetic issues that might prevent you from breaking down histamines. Um, Deborah said, so it should be B12, what is SAMI uh, or SAME? So SAMI is a nutrient. It's actually part of, um, it's very important for neurotransmitters as well, but it's it does help with the, so this is called the, sorry, this is probably becoming a little bit too scientific, but <laughs> I just do a, like a brief run through. So you've got HNMT, which is histamine N-methyltransferase and DAO, diamine oxidase. So these are different pathways or genetic um parts of your of your system that help to break down histamine and in order for these pathways to actually work this is where those nutrients come into place um a b12 isn't necessarily there b12 is really important for methylation though which can then cause detox issues which then can cause histamine issues which i'll talk about in a secchi um detox issues here we go oh does anyone like mold oh Okay, really gross story. We've actually, we fully renovated our bathroom and we're now not living in that house. Not because of the bathroom. I'm just like, our new buyer is beautiful. Hopefully she's not listening to this. <laughs> no, I told her anyway. Um, but oh my goodness, we had the worst mold issue in our bathroom to the point where I was walking to the toilet one day and our floor started sinking. And I'm like, there's something not right underneath the tiles. And builders came in and totally had to like rip everything up. I put that picture there because mold and toxins and other sort of toxic triggers can trigger a histamine response. Now, again, some people can live in a moldy environment. Actually, I was really surprised. I'm like, oh, I wonder how I'll feel when we get a brand new bathroom. I actually didn't feel any different because by then I you know, like my health is pretty good anyway. Um, but for someone else living in my moldy bathroom, they might have had major histamine issues or other mold sensitivity issues. Um, and so, so it's not so much that the mold and the toxins cause the histamine issues, although it's part of it. It's also if your detox pathways burn out as well. And again, that could be like a methylation issue. It might be genetic. It might literally be a nutritional deficiency issue. So glutathione is a really important amino acid or nutrient that supports detoxification. Um, so again, it's like, okay, well, how do I know if I have that issue? What do I need to do? Um, so love looking at the detox pathways. So uh, GPs will usually run a, um, a liver enzyme test or liver function test, which is really good. It will pick up if you have structural imbalances, you know, like signs of fatty liver disease um, or kidney disease. But the functional lab testing that we do is looking at it from a different angle. It's actually looking at nutritional deficiencies. Uh, so nutrients that support detoxification, if they're getting burnt up, then um, that is going to impair your ability to actually break down and clear these toxins from the body, including mold. Um, so this is just a little example uh, that I use. A, it's called an organic acid urine test. It's an amazing test. You can even look at your brain through your weeds. Like, how cool is that? Um, but this is just a classic example of these uh, A-hydroxybutyrate, pyroglutamate and sulfate are all glutathione markers. And this poor soul is having issues in all three of those pathways, which means that their body is just not clearing toxins very effectively. So going back to like the link with histamine, if that's happening, you're getting a buildup of toxins in your body, which is just a constant trigger an immune trigger that causes your histamine to be produced in your body in overdrive um oh i missed the x chat bow. <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys have been awesome with the chat box, um, but now is your time to ask if you have any other questions. Liz has said methylation question mark. I mentioned methylation. I'm not sure what you mean by that. If you want to add a little bit more, that'd be cool. <laughs> okay. All right. So how do we actually address this? So all the what was really like, what, what is it? What causes it? Yeah. Yeah. Liz, you might've missed. Um, I did mention methylene can be like, it's part of detoxification. So if you got, if you have methylation issues, whether that's because of genetics or maybe just like nutritional deficiencies due to other reasons um yes that can be linked to histamine um oh anna so if exercise creates histamines will your body adjust to it yes so like like all the histamine foods that i'm about to go over you'll probably be like oh what that is so healthy like fermented foods and bone broth what? so exercise is also healthy it's just that again, like if the if the load gets too high in your bucket, then adding in exercise, adding in histamine foods, it just it's just too much for your body to handle. So as you address the root causes, the body systems that break down, and those deeper root causes as to why that happened in the first place, then yes, you can absolutely exercise, and it shouldn't cause any issues unless I don't know you're doing like marathons every day or something that might not be great. <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah. People with the MTHFR, people, so Vanessa asked, do you find people with MTHFR gene are more likely to develop histamine intolerance because of methylation issues? I do find that people with that gene are more susceptible to just developing anything, really. Um, so, and again, it's not all doom and gloom. You're, um, you can't live life the way that you want to. It's more that like those root causes need to be addressed and your body needs to be supported um, very robustly in order for you to be able to switch on your genes so that they can work properly. But yeah, it is common. Um, I haven't gone into mast cell um, activation, which is kind of like histamine intolerance times 10, but MTHFR gene is very is commonly associated with that as well. Um, okay, so, so how do we do this? Yep. So what you want to do is you really want to figure out, okay, so first of all, I probably should have rearranged this. So first of all, like what I would do with a client where I'm like, ooh, reacting to eggs and exercise and oh, chocolate. I'd be like, okay, let's do a low histamine diet. So that'd kind of be like step one. I'd put that at the end because I wanted to go over that at the end. But that would be step one, just to even like rule it in or out. Um, your body responds really quickly to it if you do have a buildup of histamine in your body. And then if you do the diet and it's like no change to my symptoms, it's like, cool, scrunch that diet up, chuck it in the bin, a bin and you probably don't have histamine issues. And so then you've got to continue digging and figuring out what's going on. Um, if you do the diet and things change for you and look, it might not uh, take away all your symptoms. Like for some people it does. For other people, they feel 50% or even maybe 25% better. That's still enough information from your body that you have a histamine intolerance issue that needs to be addressed. And sometimes people do the low histamine diet and have no change, but then when they bring all the foods back in, they have a major flare up. So again, they're kind of like the things that I'm looking out for just to one say, is this an angle that we should be going down? Um, and then once that is, I am a big fan of test, not guess. So it's like, okay, let's figure out, let's, let, let's look at top layer, layer first, body systems, and then figure out what body systems are out of whack. So in terms of histamine, it's like, is it a stress adrenal issue or maybe even a brain issue? Are you producing too much estrogen? Have you got nasty pathogens that might be producing too much um, histamine? Are your, is your gut lining or your digestive enzymes really deficient and you're not able to break down histamines from food or do you have detox issues? So we do like testing around that so that we can actually figure out what the heck is going on. Um, then it's about getting to the root. So looking under the hood, connecting the dots, confirming the imbalances with lab testing, as I mentioned earlier, that's our answers roadmap. I won't go over it in fine detail, but you'll have information around like how we actually get those answers for you. Um, and then the healing principle. So then it's like, okay, let's just 
pick one. Like, let's just say you have a candida overgrowth. It's like, okay, well, why is that happening? Is it coming from like body and behaviors that you're doing that might be affecting and causing a candida overgrowth? Maybe you're eating too much sugar or carbohydrates. Maybe you're not sleeping enough and that's affecting your immune system. Um, and then like, or is it a mind thing? Is it that you're overly stressed that's suppressing your immune system, which is causing a candida overgrowth to occur in the first place? Are there toxic things happening in your home, whether that's your relationships or the things that you're breathing in? And then, I mean, uh, like I could go on for an hour just about candida alone, because basically what you want to do is you just keep asking the question, why? Okay, I am eating sugar. Well, why is that? because I really love sweet stuff. Well, why is that? Um, because I don't feel like I have any sweetness in my life. Well, why is that? Oh, because blah, 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 blah. So, and very often then you get to the deep root cause that caused that behavior to happen in the first place anyway, which then, can you have them all? Can you have all the root causes? Maybe Kim. <laughs> um, we can work through it. And the thing is too, all of them have like a cascade effect as well. So at the end of the day, like if it's literally, I don't love myself and I don't believe I am worthy to heal. And sometimes that is the root cause. Then it's like, okay, if we address that deep root cause, everything else kind of like balances out on its own anyway because if you truly love yourself and you honor your body you're going to do things that support your body you're going to choose to be with the people that bring you love and joy you're going to da -da 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 -da. um so yeah it might sound overwhelming but get to the root cause and all this other stuff falls into place a lot quicker <laughs> Um, oh, if you haven't done, so if you want to tap into, it's not specifically around um, histamine intolerance, but it is, I've created a scorecard that looks into um, the, uh, the main contributors or root causes that cause your body systems to burn out in the first place. It also rates your body symptoms, uh, body burnout symptoms as well, it gives you an overall score, but it breaks it down in different um, quadrants as well. I'll put that link in there. Really helpful quiz. Um, it's free to do. It takes about eight to nine, 10 minutes for most people. So it doesn't take too long. Um, okay, low histamine diet. Let's have a look at this. Oh, five minutes. Okay, I can do this. Um, all right. Okay, so low histamine diet. Low histamine diet is not the root cause. I will say that again, people, because I love avocados and I love bananas and I love cacao. Eating histamine foods is not the root cause. It's just a sign that your bucket load is too high. But in saying that, doing a low histamine diet reduces that bucket load really quickly, helps you to feel symptomatic improvement. One, we use it as a test to see if you have the issue. And two, it's part of treatment as well to keep those levels down for long enough while we you know, address the underlying stresses. Um, uh, privacy data use around participant data for the test. Are you, is that the scorecard tests that you're talking about or functional lab tests, Liz? <laughs> Tara said, I'm so happy you said that. Kikeo is live. Um, if it's the scorecard, uh, I have access to that. Um, my team does, but it's pretty secure. Um, if you're really concerned, you can put in a fake name. <laughs> You don't have to put your phone number. You probably want to put your email address because you'll get a report for that. And definitely when it comes to functional lab testing, definitely everything is private and confidential. Um, all right. So low histamine diet. I will actually just um, unscreen share that one. And I'm going to screen share the booklet that I will give you guys access to on our website, which will just be for the registrants today. Um, so... In the booklet, it talks about what histamine is, da 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 um, I thought I would just jump right down to what it actually looks like. Um, is this is a low histamine diet completely new to anyone or everyone kind of like joined this webinar because you have a bit of an understanding in terms of histamine intolerance? um yeah new okay cool all right well let me go over it so basically it's in two phases as well so phase one um you take out h food so that's foods that contain histamine 
but then you also have a bunch of other foods that liberate your own histamine production. And so in phase one, you're taking out both of those foods. Um, but when it comes to bringing the foods back in, that's where you start bringing in histamine liberating foods because they're usually the less problematic ones. Um, oh yeah, Tara. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So we've got some newbies to low histamine diet. Tara's tried it, but she's caved because of the foods that she loves. Great to know it's not the root cause. Yes, yes, yes. It's kind of just like that mindset shift of it's just, it's just part of the treatment. It's not a forever thing. Um, okay, so protein. So most proteins are fine. The ones to avoid are seafoods, um, eggs, pork, and any aged meats. Um, dairy products or dairy products are histamine liberating. So you've got to take out dairy for the first two to four weeks. Oh, around that duration, if you feel improvement after two weeks, then like, you know, you have a histamine issue. If you're working with a practitioner, like if someone was working with me, it's like, okay, cool. Let's jump in and, you know, start addressing root causes. Um, if you're not, and you feel great that you're hating the diet well it's up to you what you do <laughs> um, if you're not feeling any improvement after two weeks and you're mentally coping I would actually say try and do it for the full four weeks because sometimes people's histamine load is so high that at the two-week mark it's just not long enough to bring those levels down so I would continue to the four-week mark if there's no change just chuck the diet away and say cool that's we can tick that off as a not an issue um, so veggies, uh, most veggies you can eat, a lot of the veggies to not consume because they're high in histamine are nightshady type vegetables. So capsicum, eggplants, olives, spinach, tomatoes. Green and yellow may be okay for some people, but not red tomatoes and fermented foods, which is just, that's often a really big sign because a lot of people feel good on fermented foods. But if I have a client in front of me and they're like, yeah, every time I have kombucha, I'm like running to the toilet. I'm like, okay, we might have to look into histamine for you. And so basically the bugs that ferment the foods are producing histamine at the same time. Um, fruits, again, most fruits are fine, but foods, fruits not to consume are bananas, dried fruits, it's just fruits, tangerines, avocado, that's a hard one, kiwi, raspberry, strawberries, pineapple and papaya. And if you kind of look at this, like it's really hard to know if you have a histamine issue because a lot of people just generally eat all this food in your normal diet, especially, especially if you're eating healthy. And that's also a big little um, question mark or a big sort of like stick my antennas out is if I have a client and they have been eating, you know, like a processed diet and then I get them to first, it's just like initially like, when it comes to nutrition, I'll usually just say, okay, let's just like ditch the processed food. We're not going to do anything crazy. It's just like to start eating more whole foods. And a lot of people will start eating more scrambled eggs for breakfast and nuts and seeds for snacks, um, you know, more fruit, more veggies. And if someone comes back to me after eating healthy from eating a processed diet and they feel worse, then I start thinking about histamine issues as well. Um, grains. So really it's just avoiding gluten containing grains. All other grains and starches are fine to consume on the low histamine diet, which makes it a bit easier because there's more variety. Um, legumes, soy, green peas, red peas, sugar, snap beans, and sweet peas, um, are all high in histamine. I had, remember I had a lady and she's like, oh my goodness. Yes. Every time I've boil up those frozen peas I get really itchy and come out in welts and I could never work out what it was and I'm like the green peas of all things what the heck um soups so I mean most homemade soups are fine um but bone broths or if you're slow cooking meals or making like long slow cooked soups you don't want to cook them any longer than two hours because the longer that you're cooking something the more histamine is being produced and same with leftovers so if you are big on meal preps you know and that helps you to eat healthy which is great if you're putting things in the fridge and they're sitting there for like two three four maybe even five days the longer that they're sitting in the fridge and the more histamine is being produced. So when you read through the ebook, when you get access to it, I do actually talk about that. So if you're going to do this and you are someone who meal preps, you'll need to freeze everything. That's a bit annoying, but freeze everything, pull it out on the day you're going to eat it just so that it prevents um, the histamine buildup in the food. Um, beverages, 
all of them except for herbal tea or water. <laughs> so, you know, green tea, coffee, kombucha, um, alcohol, sweeteners. I try and just keep it pretty minimal with the sweeteners because, um, again, often there's like candida issues going on with histamine issues. So just sticking with stevia, organic honey are usually the safest ones to do while you're doing this trial, um, low histamine diet. Um, Oh, Marion, how do you treat someone with a histamine issue? Um, oh, that is a complex issue. Um, I, I might come back to that one um, at the end. Uh, Tara, no wonder I haven't been able to nut it down as a meal prep lot shall be freezing now. Yeah, actually, that was a big one for me. Um, tomatoes was a big issue. But if oh, even now I have to kind of be careful of how long it's sitting in the fridge um, because tomato is high in histamine but then the longer it's sitting in the fridge it just becomes this potent mess of histamine and so it can cause a lot of issues for people nuts and seeds this is a hard one this is probably when I did this um low histamine diet this is the hardest thing for me because I love my cashews <laughs> and all sorts of nuts and seeds and so the only ones you want to consume is macadamias and coconut products um, condiments, pretty much, you know, if there's anything fermented, things with soy, you want to avoid, there's some extra condiments, um, all spice, cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg are ones to avoid. That was actually really hard as well, because I just love flavor in all things. And they're just, as you have seen when I've been going through this as well, like there's a lot of healthy superfoods in here, um, which again, can make it really difficult to work out if you have a histamine issue, if you're eating healthy. Um, and then fats and oils. So most of the usual ones that people consume, butter, coconut, flax, ghee, grape seed, olive oil, MCT oil are fine to consume. You just want to avoid anything with soy or like a nut-based oil. All right, so that's what you do for two to four weeks. Any questions about that? Um, in phase two, Look, even if you're not working with a practitioner, you can move to phase two. Sometimes people just need a little reset if your histamine issue isn't too bad. And then you can start just gradually adding foods back in um, without any issues. So you could go ahead and do that. Um, if you want to work with someone, um, you know, that's probably the best way. Or if you're trying to bring foods back in and you just keep flaring up, then you definitely need to start. You know, there's definitely bigger things going on which are affecting um, your histamine load. Um, so I'll make sure that's on our website where we will put the recording and I've even made it super easy for you. I've put lots of breakfast and lunches and dinner and snack recipes so that um, you actually know what you can be consuming because that's the hardest thing too with some of these. It's like, okay, so what can I eat? <laughs> um, so that will hopefully be um, help, helpful for you. Um, okay, so I'm almost finished. Oh, any questions? You guys have been awesome asking questions, but if you have any dying questions before we finish off, pop them in the chat. Um, I'll just finish off these last few slides and then I'll come back and answer any questions, especially for those who want to leave because um, it's getting late. Okay, so if you do want support, if you're like, yes, 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 I'm ticking all the boxes. Yes, yes, I've even tried the low histamine diet already and I know I have issues. I would be very happy and honored if you wanted to um, uh, book in for an initial consult. There's a fancy QR code there. Um, if you're more of a, uh, what's the word? Um, a typing person, <laughs> I can also put in the link there. Um, so that's 197. It, it's a 90 minute consult. We go very deep into connecting the dots, looking at your overall health, um, understanding what is happening and why it's happening. Um, it gives me great information to then prescribe you the most important lab tests that you need so that we can work out um, where those imbalances lie. Um, you get access to our, it's called our online answers portal as well. So there's like so much information and valuable content in there that actually it should be 297. I'll give it to you for 197. <laughs> Um, and for every person that books in for an initial consult, we actually um, give a day's worth of education and safety to Free to Shine. And they're an amazing Australian company that support 
Cambodian girls um, who to prevent them from getting stolen and sold into sex trafficking. Um, so we are very like my husband and I are both parents and our like big world vision is imagine if we had a whole bunch of full of the world full of healthy, happy parents leading our healthy, happy children. That's going to end body burnout like for generations, which is just like the ultimate big picture vision. Um, all right. And if you're like, oh, yeah, sounds good, but I would like a bit more information. We do also have um, the opportunity to just book in for a free 15 minute chat um, so that we can see if we're a good fit and you can answer any questions that you have. Um, and also we have a free Facebook page. It's called the Power Parent Society. You can even join if you're a fur parent or an auntie, uncle parent. <laughs> really, it's just about providing you more support um, with your health. Um, and lastly, um, on Friday, the 27th of May this week at 12.30 p.m., it's also part of Natural Medicine Week. I'm running another webinar um, with my husband and also Dr. Daniel Kalish, my amazing mentor. We're talking all about fatigue and the three hidden causes of fatigue. We'll go deep into all the lab testing and everything as well. So um, if you wanted to join that if, that, if this is the first time you've heard about it, I will also pop the link in for that so that that you can just jump right in and register. Um, that is also for free. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming along. You guys were awesome. Um, stay tuned for an email that will be sent out with the recording, my slides, the hist low histamine diet as well. Um, if you want to head off to bed, do your nighttime routine, totally cool. I will just stay around for a few more minutes just to answer some of these questions that are coming through. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I'm just going up. Um, thank you. What protein to eat if you're vegan? Yeah, that's tricky. Um, well, you can have... So soy is out, but there's all your grains that you can eat. There's macadamia. You probably will want to um, use a protein powder. Um, like a hemp-based one would probably work best. Because, you know, if you're taking out soy, um, the majority of your nuts and seeds, then it kind of leaves you with not a lot of variety to get all your amino acids. So that's a good question. What would be an acute histamine response after eating a lot of histamine? <laughs> I forgot to tell this story and how long can they last? Okay, so here's a story. So this is right at the start of the COVID pandemic. My mom, super anxious about my dad getting COVID because he has like health condition issues, um, past ones. And anyway, he came up one morning. This is like just the day after the whole lockdown thing happened in a massive rash and she freaked out. She's like, he's got COVID. And so they went to the emergency. He didn't have COVID. They didn't know what, they did heaps of tests. They're like, we don't know what's wrong with him. He's not dying. So just taking him home. Anyway, um, they asked me, they're like, oh, do you know what? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, well, that's weird. And what has dad been eating? And so dad made sauerkraut. He loves his fermented food. And he um, made a sauerkraut that was fermented for far too long and he ate the whole jar in like a day. I don't know why he did that. But anyway, so that is, would be something that would happen. Um, but a lot of people, yeah, like itchiness is really common. <sighs> kind of depends on where your weak spots are. For some people, it's all gut. It's like bloating, diarrhea, heartburn. Um, for other people, um, like for me, I would feel like my skin was getting oily and tickly, really weird. But that was a big thing when I had dairy as well. But if my histamine load got too high, I would feel like that. Um, sometimes after like chocolate. <laughs> um, have all the symptoms of histamine intolerance. Oh, I have all of the hist symptoms of histamine intolerance, but not the others. Does that mean something? Um, oh, of H1, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So some again, sometimes it's just isolated to maybe one bunch of, of histamine issues. Now, if you're noticing that it's just purely like related to a body system, it might mean that you don't actually have a histamine issue. It might be that you've got specific body system imbalances, which are then causing those um, histamine issues. 
like for example, um, there was the neurotransmitter one, maybe you have anxiety, maybe it's actually nothing to do with histamine intolerance, maybe it's because your serotonin levels are depleted um, or you've got inflammation in the brain, all those things can be tested for. Um, do B12 supplements flare up a histamine reaction if detoxification is an issue? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Um, so some bees um, have, I can't think of the term, um, but they are, uh, the answer is potentially yes. And I would probably have to, so that I'm not just making something up in the spot, have to actually research why that is the case. But yes, some occasionally some bees can affect. Um, yes, no, it's because some bees can actually feed bacteria. So if you've got a very dysbiotic gut, um, some bees can cause fermentation in the gut, which then can cause more histamine production in the gut. Um, and I think that's all the questions. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much for staying on. Have an awesome night. Happy Natural Medicine Week. Woo! <laughs> All right, see you guys. <laughs>